Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patrick Norton. I'm from DigitalLifeTV.com, and we want to welcome you to our video preview of Windows Vista Beta 1. That's the next generation Microsoft operating system. It's kind of interesting that Vista is the name, but you've got sort of a cat's eye view and a field of grass as you open up. This is the native desktop wallpaper that shows up as soon as you launch the system. And as exciting as that is, you're probably more interested in some of what's going on here. And we're going to open up one more window. Let's get a picture in the background. And as I drag this folder here, you'll notice something. There's obviously some new design going on here. This is the arrow interface. And if we close in a little more tightly, you'll notice, check this out, that's glass. And what that is is transparency that allow you to see what's going on behind certain elements of the interface and the windows. So let's pull back a little bit. We've got your basic documents folder here. And you'll notice something. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a search tool. So just for fun, let's search for picture files in there. And you'll notice, and we should point out, search is integrated almost everywhere inside of Microsoft Windows Vista. You open a folder, there's probably search. And we're going to slide this up in that big micro, uh, excuse me, the big magnifying glass. It's not quite a microscope on the right. Is part of the preview pane. So let's click on here and take a look at some of these pictures. And you'll notice they pop up there on the right. And there's some uh, interesting meta information that's starting to show up here. So you can actually give star ratings to things. And it has the information on the picture. You can add an author. You can add keywords in there. So we'll call this Baja 500 and truck just for fun. And what happens is you can start looking at this. Virtual folders are sort of the next generation of data handling inside of Windows Vista. So the idea that you can save particular searches and they become a live and active folder that tracks what's going on. Or you can have a live document. The live folders have documents that are you can sort of track what's going on with them. It's pretty slick and it's pretty interesting. And I'm going to minimize this for a second. Actually, take that back. What we're going to show is uh, I forgot to show you folks what's going on with the preview pane. One of the things you can do is cycle through here, and there's going to be a big sliding bar here that shows up. You can either just click on it like this, and you've got your preview thumbnails, details. And it scrolls through some different ways of looking at the information. Or you can slide through manually, which I always find a little strange as we scroll the pictures back and forth here into different formats of thumbnails, details, and these giant preview pictures in there. But definitely a lot of work on the interface to, uh, I like to think of it as making it a little more OS ten like but definitely make it more aesthetic and better handling more types of information. So let's uh, close that down again for a second. Another big change is inside of the start menu. You might not think there's a lot you can do to a start menu, but they made one really great improvement. Now you notice the All Programs button. And if you have a lot of programs, say 50, 12, 100 of them, you're probably used to hitting this button and seeing a giant cascade of folders coming off to the right. Instead, it's all done inside that pane on the left side there. So there's our Accessories folder. You're probably used to that being ginormous. If I click on that, it stays all inside of here, which is really convenient and keeps you from having to drag your mouse across the screen and taking that. It's just a nice little feature that makes it much more accessible. Of course, aesthetics aren't all of what's going on. <laughs> Probably the biggest changes are security changes inside of Microsoft Windows Vista. So I'm going to go up to this one is the user account and parental controls. I can turn that on or off. That's one of the big things that's right there in the start menu and install the operating system. If I pull this back, you'll see a pretty basic window it's going to pop up there on the right, and hmm, you know what? We've already got the user account and parental controls turned on, which means it's asking us for a password. And you'll notice that passwords are going to show up a lot inside of Microsoft Windows Vista. So I'm going to click on that and enter our fake password in there, and this gives us the option of turning those on or off. And the big thing is right here, Windows is helping make your secure computer secure by asking for your permission before making changes that require administrator rights. Normally, if you have administrator rights on an account, it will automatically do anything you want. Install software, make a change to an operating system setting, or install spyware without you really noticing it in the background. So the nice thing about this is I'm going to close that out. And if we pull back for a second, I'm going to open up our documents folder. There's that fresh, clean arrow look again. And let's see, there should be a install folder in here. Let's do a quick search for a file. And I'm going to hit search the computer. And Hmm, well, rats, I got erased. Well, what was going to show up if it was still in there is it would show you as I tried to install that particular piece of software, 
it would refuse to let me. It would actually demand a password before it would install the software. And the reason that's important is because it prevents things from being installed without your knowledge. And that's a pretty big change for Microsoft. And it should actually make it somewhat more secure. So, yeah, looks like I didn't download that to where we thought it did. So my apologies for not setting that up for you, folks. But let's show you another example of that. We'll go down to the security alerts, and we'll double click on that. And look, this action requires administrator rights, and it's going to want a password before it lets us into the Windows security system. So we're going to close that out and go back to what we were talking about the user account parental controls. Parental controls are a new addition in here. So we'll open up the control panel. Again, we've got a new design, a new layout. And as always, you can go back to a classic view. It's a little uh, more what uh, we're used to in the past. But if I click on user accounts and parental controls, let's go into our setup parental controls. And we're going to log in. Yay. And let's go to my other account. And we've locked this account down a little bit. Now, if you notice up here, so you can turn your parental controls on and off. And you can turn your parental controls on and off. And you have the ability, and this is something they're still developing, of collecting information about what the computer is being used for, which is pretty interesting. Now, if we take a look at this, games rating restrictions, well, if you know <laughs> the rather embroiled, let's click on that. There we go. Entertainment Software Rating Board. You have the ability early childhood, everyone, teen, mature, adults only. You can actually lock down what level of program that the user has access to or the gaming application they have access to. And what's interesting, we're going to scroll down here a little bit. You can block games with no rating, which has an interesting side effect we're going to show you in a second. Or you can actually block out specific types of content inside a game. So if you have you know, lyrics you don't like in a particular song, nudity, violence, uh, there's for all the people who play skateboarding games, depictions of blood, anything that has something you believe that the individual should not have access to, you can lock out games that do that. So we're going to back to change settings for a second, and we'll go to block specific games. You'll notice we talked before about unrated games cannot be played. Well, look at that. That also includes the Solitaire, Minesweeper, Hearts. Kind of a nice feature if you want to prevent people from, say, playing uh, solitaire while you're at work, but it also is kind of a strange little side effect of locking down gaming access on the computer. We're going to show you one other major change inside of Microsoft Windows Vista, and this is going to show up for all the XP users out there too. Internet Explorer 7.0. Again, we've got the arrow and the glass interface, and up here on the right, we have a new search tool. And the search tool, as you'll notice, a lot of features you may know from Firefox are inside of here. So if we close in on that, MSN search, of course, Microsoft search tool is native, but you can also choose AOL, Yahoo, or Google inside of there. And if we stay on that shot here, you see the address bar. We're going to log into, or pretend to log into Gmail. And you'll notice something's going to pop up on the right. The secure sockets layer icon is not just at the bottom of the screen, but is also there in the address bar, which gives you a nice way of knowing what's going on there. If I click that, it tells me that the certificate information, which will also help you if you're worried about phishing attacks. It's a nice little security feature in there. And we're going to close out that certificate. If we look back at the window, we're going to go up to PCMag.com. And we're going to open up a bunch of tabs. Yes, they finally added tabbed browsing into Internet Explorer natively. What does that mean? If you're not familiar with uh, Firefox or Mozilla, it's beta, folks, so sometimes it runs a little bit slow. So it'll come up here in a second. In the meantime, we're going to open up some blank tabs in here. Essentially, they're little browsers within your browser that lets you take a look at what's going on. So let's hit a few other of our websites here. And go back to msn.com. There we go. PC Magazine. So if I want to look at a story, rather than putting it in this one, I can right-click on it and open in a new tab. And look, there it pops up over here, and I can now use my tabs to switch between what's going on on the computer. So these are all individual web pages that I've opened. Another one that's in there that a lot of people are looking forward to, if I go into tools, traditionally you're, if you're deleting your browsing history, it requires lots and lots of clicking, which can be anything from the spousal browsing history evasion or just not wanting to leave your bank account information and password information on the computer. It's now finally a one-button situation. 
And are you sure you want to permanently delete all currently saved cookies, history, web forms, data? Let's go ahead and hit yes on that, which is nice because traditionally you would have had to have gone into tools and internet options and then rooted around here and hit multiple buttons in multiple places to delete all that same information. So Internet Explorer, more security features, integrated search, tab browsing, definitely taking some cues off of Firefox there. Windows Vista, not just a whole new look, but lots and lots of security changes. That is our video preview of Windows Vista Beta 1. My name is Patrick Norton. I'm from DigitalLifeTV.com, and I want to thank you for watching.